Yeah, I just was curious what your go-to choice is for anesthetic when you're doing these sort of injections are. I mean, obviously it depends on the place, but just like given the examples you gave about the ATFL sprain or like a knee, what are you thinking yep. of when you're choosing your anesthetic? So I have uh, really just two anesthetics that I use. Uh, lidocaine for my, for my no, what I call no sting, uh, which is basically just going to be uh, lidocaine with some bicarb. So it's just buffered. So it no sting, huh? get it. Um, and it is, uh, that's what I use to make a skin wheel to uh, insert my needle through. Uh, if I need to numb up a little area that I know is going to be a little more sensitive for the patient, that's what I'll use. <laughs> The, uh, the other main one that I use is ropivacaine. So ropivacaine is a little bit of a longer acting anesthetic. It is not quite as long as Marcaine, but it has a significantly better side effect profile compared to Marcaine. Um, I know in the prolo world, a lot of docs love Procaine. I'm not a huge fan of Procaine. Uh, and that is for a few reasons. One, patients can and do have uh, bad reactions to procaine. Um, and so I just, I don't like that. And I don't want my patient who, you know, just had an injection to potentially have a reaction like that. And so I kind of stay away from procaine for that, in part, that one reason. The other reason is that there is an interesting study looking at the protein expression. So the mRNA changes that occur uh, in uh, adipose-derived MSCs and comparing them, they just compared lidocaine to procaine. And uh, ropivacaine was not in that mix, but this research showed that it was less favorable to use procaine in the presence of stem cells than it was lidocaine. Um, and then, so if we take, if I take that piece of information and then look at the other research that shows that between uh, lidocaine, marcaine, and ropivacaine, that ropivacaine is less cytotoxic to the chondrocytes, so it's less chondrotoxic, and it preserves the MSC quality, so our stemness from the stem cells. Ropivacaine does better than marcaine and lidocaine. And so I look at that at saying, okay, ropivacaine appears to be safer when I put it around cartilage, it appears to be safer than lidocaine when I put it around adipose, which even if we're doing a, a knee joint injection and we're injecting into the fat pad of the knee, right? We're gonna be, there's adipose stem cells in that fat. There's gonna be adipose stem cells that are just present in the subcutaneous tissue if we're doing a more superficial nerve hydrodissection or something like that. And so because of that, I choose ropivacaine uh, over procaine.